Hey, hey, God bless everyone. Sammy D sitting here, comfort of my mobile, drinking me some cafe, Bustelo, as I normally do. And I want you to know that I am praying. Oh, is that you thought I said plain? No, praying. And I hope you are too. For the condition of our world today. You know, this year 2020 started over the ping pang. I mean, 2020 vision kind of blinded us. We're going through some serious stuff. Pandemic all over the world. Quarantine. Shutdowns. Everybody's wearing a mask. We're in trouble with this virus. And then on top of that, we have some riots going on throughout the land. Yeah, we got people looting, breaking stores, protesting, police brutality at the highest. We're facing some troubled times. Churches are shut down. Can't have congregation meetings anymore. Police arresting you. If you're not wearing a mask or if you're congregating or you're not staying six feet apart, it's a mess. And all we can do is pray. Prayer. Power of God will move in the midst of prayer. So I am praying for our nation. I'm praying for the country. I'm praying for nations around the world. And I hope you're doing the same thing. Because no matter what, we serve a mighty God. He's still on the throne and he's still in charge. Can you say amen? Mm -mm. Now watch this. I want to read this scripture to you. This is King David, man. He's a bad dude. He wrote some serious Psalms. All of them are good for every day of the year. This is Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Listen to this. Verse 71. Verse 119. Verse 71. Listen to what King David said. It is good for me to be afflicted. Woo. That's some serious stuff there. Most of us want to get away from affliction. God, take this affliction from me. But he says, it is good for me to be afflicted. Let's find out why. So that I may learn your decrees or your word, your commandments. It is good for me to be afflicted so that I may learn your commandments, your word. Whatever, what, what King David was saying, it's in spite of what's going on, the best thing for me is to learn your word. In spite of the affliction, it is good because through it, I learn your word. And I want to talk to you for a few minutes uh, on building your house upon the rock. Did you get that one? Build your house upon the rock. You know, so many things are going on in our world and people are asking, why? Why, Lord? Prophetically, we know why. Jesus is coming soon. Now, I want to bring a prophetic message to you. Not pathetic, prophetic. I want to testify, not test a lie. I want to share with you the testimony of God, not a testimony, a testimony of what God is doing. Prophetically, if we read the Bible towards the end, we know that Jesus mm, 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 is coming back. What goes up must come down. And all the signs are right there. The second coming of Jesus Christ, praise God. And you know, God has to allow humanity, I want you to get this here, God allows humanity through to go through difficult times. Many times God would allow humanity to go through some difficult times. You may say, Sam, what's the purpose? Why would he allow that? Well, there's some reasons for that. I'm going to explain that to you. One is, we need to remember that when everything is going well, see, when things are going well, we tend to relax. We tend to relax. 
We rely on our own strength. We feel self-sufficient. And you know what happens? We forget God. When things are going well, we rely on our own strength, self-sufficient. We forget about God. We're just carrying our business as usual. We forget about God. But then there are moments like this with all the pandemics and all the riots and all the confusion, the economy's going down, medical doctors don't know what to do, people are sick with all this confusion. You know what happens? Moments like this show us that we are nothing without God. Did you get that one? We are nothing without God. And in the blink of an eye, an invisible enemy, in the blink of an eye, an invisible enemy can appear, show up like this virus, man. We weren't expecting. One day we were celebrating the year 2020 in our churches and praising God and worshiping. Praise God! Happy New Year! The next thing, boom, an invisible enemy just popped up out of nowhere. And it took everything, thousands of lives. Regardless of your social status, regardless of the class, regardless of your race, it just came and took people's lives. And God allows these things to wake us up because you know why? With this pandemic, many people have turned to God. And I ask myself, where are the powerful ones? The celebrities, the rich ones, the millionaires, the trillionaires. Their money, their power can't do anything for them to stop this virus. Did you hear that? It can't do anything. You can't stop this virus. Scientists, doctors, uh, anyone with money, with power, you're all affected by it. And God will allow it. And God will permit it. And God is in charge. And he sends it out or allows it to go throughout the land so that people can turn back to him. There are more people praying now than ever before. There are more people that stopped praying before this pandemic. When the pandemic hit, they came back to prayer. They went back to listening to the word of God. They came back to crying out to God. They came back to seeking God. God allows these things to bring us back to the feet of Jesus. Come on, shall praise the Lord, somebody. During these times, when we know that we're fragile, we're weak, insignificant, only in these times, we stop and reflect and we bow down before the only true God. Because if it wasn't for this time, we won't do it. We don't. We won't, we won't be interested. But now we bow before the only true God through these crises. Sometimes it has to hit home to bring us back to the feet of Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's only through times like this when you find yourself in the desert, the toughest of time, when people humble themselves before God. They, they, they start to seek the Lord. They call on the Most High God. God has done that before with the children of Israel. Whenever they went astray, he allowed enemies, the Babylonian for instance, to take them captive and then they began to cry out to God. It happened in the book of Nehemiah and Daniel. It happened in many times in history, God has to allow certain things uh, to bring us back to him uh, because Jesus is about to come back. The greatest event uh, of all times that uh, uh, is going to happen soon and God is calling his people. God is calling the backslider to come back. God is calling those that are lukewarm, those that are lazy spiritually, those that forsook the Lord and have no time for God. God is bringing them back. Uh, he's bringing sinners back to himself. He's bringing the church back to a place of crying out to God to a place of evangelizing and preaching the gospel so the word can go out throughout the land. If it wasn't for times like this, we'll be sitting back under a palm tree drinking a piña colada, perhaps a virgin one, and just sitting back and saying, yeah, ba -da -ba -doo. but God shakes us and he puts us in a desert so we can cry out and say, help Lord. Are you listening to me? <laughs> I want you to know you can ride out this storm. In the time of trouble, when you're in the desert, many people cry out to God and they come back to the Lord. They come back to the feet of Jesus. 
Praise God. Hallelujah. Some of us are spiritually lazy. We don't read the word anymore. We're not seeking God. We're only praying a few minutes out of the day. Or we may just take the dust out of the Bible and read one verse and go to sleep. God wants a relationship. He wants you closer to him. He wants you to hide in him so that you can ride out the storm. Once you're in Christ and you're hiding out by faith in Christ, nothing can touch you. Nothing can harm you. That's why Psalm 1 says, he that dwells in the secret place, he or she that dwells in the secret place shall abide, shall abide, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I want to be found under the shadow of the Almighty when the storm is coming. Me. When the storm that's already here, I want to be found in him. He's my refuge. He's my fortress. He's my rock. Nothing will touch you unless God allows it. You're hiding in the most high under the shadow of his wings. Come on, shout praise the Lord somebody. Hey, hey, hey. In times like this, we need a relationship with the Lord. Many that have drifted away from God, many that have turned their backs on God are now coming back to God through this crisis, through this time. Those riots that are going on, people are protesting. There are people in that community that are crying out to God, God, not my house, God, not my child, God, not my business. They don't want to be looted. They cry out to God for protection. So that's why the psalmist said it is good that I was afflicted because in my affliction, I cried out to you. I got closer to you. I learned your word through my affliction because if I wouldn't have been affliction, I would have been business as usual. Take it easy. Everything's all right. Through the power of this crisis, then we see the supernatural power of God. Can you say praise the Lord somebody? So let this happen. It's written, it's prophesied. It will happen. You see, God doesn't always, remember, God doesn't always change the situation. I know a lot of us are praying, God, change the situation. God, take this. God doesn't always change the situation. God will change us through the situation. That's why the, the, the psalmist said, King David, he said, man, it's good for me to be afflicted because in my affliction, you changed me. You gave me a desire, hunger for your word. So God doesn't always change the situation. He'll change us through the situation. He doesn't change the situation, but he'll change us. He'll use the situation to change us. Praise God for that. Now listen to me. These times will test us. They're testing you to see if your house is built on the rock or on sand. If it's on sand, when the winds come, it'll blow your house away. That's talking about you and I, your faith. Your faith in God. Your turn from God Say, I don't believe God. God let me go through this. And it tests your faith. See if your house is built on the rock. What we need now is supernatural faith. We need the supernatural God to step in. Praise God. Whoever builds their house on the rock. Jesus was telling that in the song, the uh, Sermon on the Mount. He said, if you build your house on the sand, when the storm comes, it'll blow it away. Build it on the rock, the rock of ages, the rock of stability, the rock of salvation. Jesus is that rock. Build it on solid ground. When the storms come, it won't blow your house out. Storms come to everybody. Think about that for a minute. Storms come to everybody. Rich or poor, big, small, black, white. It comes to everyone. Spiritual storms. It comes to everyone. But only those who hear and practice the word will remain. Did you get that? Those that hear the word and practice it will remain. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God wants to keep you from being thrown around by the storm. He wants to keep you solid. And even though you're throwing in the lion's den, it's nobody said he won't be throwing in the lion's den. God then promised us a rose God. You might be throwing in the lion's den, like Daniel, excuse me, like Daniel was. You're throwing in the lion's den, but you know what? God will know how to close the lion's mouth. 
It's no telling that we won't be. I don't mean literally, but figuratively, symbolically, you'll go through in the lion's den. God knows how to close the mouth up. Hallelujah. Some of you are going through that right now. Or through the fire like the three Hebrew boys, my shack, your shack. And a billy goat, the way I like to say it. You might be in the fire, in the furnace, and they raise up the fire. But God knows how to keep the fire from burning you. It won't even touch your hair. I don't have to worry about that one there. But it will not burn you. It will not come near you. Because God is a fireman, just the same. He knows how to put out the fire. He's a lion tainer. He's a lifeguard that knows how to walk on waters. So no matter if you're drowning, he'll pick you up. In the lion's den, he'll close their mouth. In the furnace of fire, he'll put out the fire, won't even touch you. Because the God that you serve is a protector. He's a provider. He's a corrector and a director. Come on, shout praise God, somebody. Try to build your faith up. No matter what you're going through, God will protect you. So I'm encouraging you to build your faith as you go through the storm. During these days, in the end times, you will be stronger. That's what King David said. He said, man, it's good for me to be afflicted. You got to face the challenge. You got to accept the challenge. Now, most of us, like I said, want to run from it. He said, it's good for me to be afflicted <laughs> because through it, mm -mm 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 -mm, I got closer to God, got closer to his word. Are you getting closer to God through the storm? Are you getting closer to God? Doing these riots, protesting all over. Are you getting closer to God? Ay, ay, ay. Mm, I can't help falling in love with him over and over again. He gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a love between my Lord and I. So I use this moment to pray to God. I use this moment to cry out to God. I use this moment to dance with the Lord. I use this moment to enjoy myself with the Lord because Jesus is coming back soon and I want him to find me me in him praising worshiping i want to be like me Enoch. That's right. Enoch in the Old Testament. It said Enoch walked with God. He walked with God and he was no more. They went looking for me. Enoch, come home. Dinner's ready. He was no more. God took him. He said, come on, man. You, 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 you got to come home with me. I, I want to stay with the Lord. So when the Lord comes, he take me with him. When the Lord is ready to take me, I want to be found in him. I don't care about the storms of life. I don't care about all the stuff that's going on in the world. I'm not go get into political stuff. I'm not going to get into the social gospel. Who's rioting? Why are we rioting? Why we stop? I'll pray against that. I pray that we get peace. But in the meantime, I'm with Jesus. I'm with Jesus, the Lord and Savior. He's still in charge. So stay with him and ride out the storm by staying and abiding in the Lord. Father, I send a word to whoever's listening to me right now. The Bible, the Holy Spirit, does from the devil, it is the very soul, they that you will bless and bless again by the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I pray against all the commotion, all the rioting, all the confusion, all the chaos all over the world. I pray for peace. I pray for justice, Lord. Protect, Lord, our citizens. Protect our police officers. There's some good ones. I want you to protect them, Lord, that they don't get uh, hurt or anything. But I also pray that those that are bad, those that are racist, those that are brutal, that they will stop and have a change of heart and repent. I pray for our politicians that they will come up with answers and solutions and work with the community and work with our society. I pray for the church, pastors, leaders of all kinds, that you will bless them, that you will strengthen them, that you will bring healing into this land, healing into their lives, healing in their congregation. I lift up the mighty name of Jesus in the midst of our world by the power of the name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus that was shed for our sins, for our redemption. I pray this in Jesus' powerful name. Amen. Mm, 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 and amen. Woo! Hey, hey, hey! Praise God! Mm. I'll drink to that. Mm. God bless you. Ride out your storm. Stay in there with the Lord.